Bueno, arrancamos entonces esta segunda charla de Fabia Butler Laplace en el marco del programa argentino y británico de asistentes de idiomas. Este ciclo de charlas está organizado por la Dirección de Plurilingüismo de Chaco, dependiente de la Subsecretaría de Interculturalidad y Plurilingüismo. Y bueno, nos acompaña eh, Alexis Rojas, que es el director de Plurilingüismo de la provincia. Así que, Alexis, ¿querés dar alguna, algunas palabras de bienvenida? Buenas tardes. Eh, un saludo grande a todos los presentes en este día, en esta, en esta, en esta jornada, en el, con este ciclo de charla. Bueno, mi nombre es Alexis Rojas, soy director del Club del Indismo, Y en esta oportunidad vamos a estar presentando, presentando a la gente de Roma. De Fabia y con la Nadia Burgos en esta oportunidad para poder brindar esta temática este, que, que, que nos pueda comentar Fabia de su mirada, su perspectiva, este, la parte también cultural en general. Y bueno, desde nuestra dirección, nuestra, eh, desde la Subsecretaría de Interculturalidad de, de la provincia, este, le acompañamos esta iniciativa en esta, en esta jornada, este, como lo fue la temática anterior en este, en este ciclo de charla. Así que que sea una jornada muy eh, fructífera, que sea una jornada de intercambio, este, que sea una jornada también que se pueda este, dialogar, este, conocer en este sentido también este, lo que nos pueda brindar en esta oportunidad, este, Fabia, eh, con, con esta charla. Así que, desde ya mi acompañamiento y un saludo grande a todos los profesores, a estudiantes que están este, conectados en esta reunión. Así que, Madia, este, gracias por, por el espacio y bueno, que esté una linda jornada. Bueno, muchísimas gracias, eh, Alexis. Así que bueno, desde la Dirección de Plurilingüismo tratamos de organizar este ciclo de charlas, ya que en años anteriores quizás los asistentes solamente... Eh, podían estar en, en lugares físicos, como en el profesorado de inglés de resistencia, y otros profesores, otros docentes de, del interior del Chaco no podían tener acceso a, a los beneficios que, que tiene hablar con un eh, hablante intercultural. Así que en este caso decidimos con Fabia preparar algo sobre los, eh, en español, los que vieron el título de la charla en español, habrán visto que se llama Des Encuentros Culturales, y bueno, en, en inglés estuvimos pensando que, que ponerle algo que sea parecido a, esa, a ese juego de palabras, y bueno, decidimos ponerle cultural, cultural misunderstandings, como las diferencias y similitudes que se encontró Fabia al llegar a, a nuestro país y a, a nuestra provincia. Así que Fabia, todo tuyo. Um, hello everyone, um, I hope you can hear me. Sí, ya. Yeah. <laughs> um, Yeah, so I'm just gonna gonna talk about um, a few things that I've noticed that are different between the two cultures, um, between the UK and Argentina. Um, and I've just got a few here, so such as greetings, foods and meal times, um, school hours and and work hours as well, um, types of shops, um, and the differences differences that we have, um, and also the nightlife um, for any of you that are interested. <laughs> Um, the difference um, yeah so that's a rough rough um, summary of what I'm gonna what I'm gonna talk about okay Cami click on it Ay, Cami nos está ayudando con, con la presentación así que Cami pasa okay so the first one I think the most obvious one that I noticed um, when I got here was greetings um, in the UK we don't tend to greet people um, with two kisses um, even though in a lot of other European countries that is really normal um, so I mean if you're to meet someone in, in a formal setting for the first time you'd probably use a handshake um, if you're meeting um, someone at your school or a new boss or, or something like that um, I guess if you're meeting up with closer friends um, a hug or a that handshake type of thing. Um, I think in the UK they call it a dab, um, but I'm not 100% sure. <laughs> that's the lingo that they use. Um, so that's really common between between friends. 
Um, and then I guess if you're introduced to a group, maybe friends of friends, um, or you, you might know one or two, um, but you don't really know the rest, you'll probably be introduced by name. Um, and then you'll just stand there and, you know, say hi to everyone, but you're not expected to go and greet every single person individually all at once um, or straight away. Um, you might get to know them more individually as the night goes on or as the day goes on, but um, you're not expected as soon as you meet them to go around and greet them all individually. Uh, so that's what I thought the, ma the main difference was. We're quite, um, it's very normal to just introduce yourself verbally, maybe wave. <laughs> um, and if they're closer friends, then it's a bit more physical, a bit more affectionate. Um, but yeah. What about distance, Fabia? Distance when you're greeting one another? Um, I because think if here you, we tend to be touchy, we get close to, to one another. Yeah, I think if you don't know them, you're quite you're quite separate. There's not really a lot of physical. Um, but if, if you're friends, it, it can be quite touchy. You know, I hug all of my closest friends when I see them. Um, but if I, if I don't know someone, I'll probably just stand there. We stand far away and you just say hi and you, you chat. It's more verbal rather than physical. All right. And if it isn't more formal, here is that um, you will probably be introduced by name. If it's a more formal situation, you would be introduced by name and last name, right? Um, if, I mean, if they're expecting you, I guess maybe if you're going to a job interview, they'd probably just say your name. Um, but yeah, otherwise you'd probably say your name and your surname. All right. Yeah, because here, I, I, I don't know if you already learned the word tutear. T-U-T-E-A-R. So um, oh. here, everybody is introduced by their first name. And uh, uh, what I found out in, in other countries is unless they don't give you permission to call them by their names, you're supposed to be saying Mr., Ms., Mrs. You're not supposed to call them by their names. Uh, here, it's just we are on a first name basis. Uh, we, we wouldn't be called by our last names. So yeah, I was wondering if... That, there's kind of a permission, but please call me Fabi or please call me Fabia. And if you don't give them that permission, they would just call you Mrs. Pat Laplace <laughs> in a more formal setting, I mean. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I think, um, and maybe maybe it's not you personally, but it would be the person you're meeting. So the boss of the company or um, the head teacher, um, they would be the ones to say, oh, no, call me and then their actual name. All right, perfect. Okay, good. Okay, Kami, next slide. Um, again, another sort of pretty obvious one, I think, is types of food and more specifically the meal times. Um, so, I mean, this is all very general. Obviously, it depends on families, on individuals, but typically um, British people will eat three meals a day um, and then we snack all day in between. Um, breakfast, again, depends, but usually between seven and nine a.m. Lunch between 12 and 1.30, um, and then dinner between um, six and eight. Um, I think there's another, there's another, um, more information. <laughs> uh, yeah, Kami, si, si seguis cliqueando va. Um, so breakfast, again, typically it's common to have toast, um, some cereal, granola, porridge or eggs um, and with a tea or a coffee um, or some fruit juice. Um, in that top, the top right hand corner, you can see the traditional full English breakfast, um, which you've probably all heard of before. Um, this, again, isn't. It's traditional. We don't we don't have this every day for breakfast, um, but it will always be served in a hotel or a B and B um, or a pub. You know, sort of as the breakfast option. Um, but in people's houses, we don't we don't really tend to have that anymore. Uh, not every day, anyway. Um, so lunch. I mean, again, um, because uh, I... can you explain to us what uh, how you make porridge? Okay, so porridge. I mean, everyone has their different ways, um, but typically so it's oats and milk. Um, and I mean, you can either put it in the microwave or on the stove and you heat it up. 
so that it becomes really thick. It looks really disgusting because um, it just it becomes this really thick, sloppy bowl. Um, and then you kind of you just put whatever you want. You can put cinnamon. Um, people have fruit on the top. Um, you really just add whatever you want, whatever flavors you want to it. But the base is milk and porridge stirred until it gets really thick um, and gluey. Um, and have you eaten disgusting. that? Have you eaten porridge here while you were here, or you've uh, gotten used to our way of eating in the morning? Not yet. No, I've not. I've not had it yet. <laughs> All right. Okay. Um, good. Yeah. So then lunch we have. I mean, something because I guess we're at work or at school the whole day. You know, over lunchtime we don't get to go home. Um. So it's very typical at school and at work. Um, to make yourself what we call a packed lunch um, or you go and put it in your lunch box um, so this is again roughly a sandwich um, some crisps some vegetables some fruit um, and a drink or sometimes it might be some leftover food from the night before um, that you just put into your box and you take to work or you take to school um, so it's just something quick and easy that we can eat at work during our lunch break um, because we don't have the time to well, most people don't have the time to go home, cook a full on a full on proper meal. Um, so yeah, that's what we call a packed lunch. Okay. That's that second photo uh, on the top. Yeah, and um, basically at the well packed lunch because you were you don't usually have a siesta. You don't take naps in the middle as we do in northern Argentina. So you would work from nine to five, right? So nine to five. all right, you don't get home to have lunch. No, exactly. So we usually oh. have an, around an hour's an hour's lunch break. So I guess if you, you know, if you lived close to your work, you might be able to go home. But usually, an hour's an hour's not long enough to go make a proper meal and come back. So all right. So that's why you would have the the packed lunch. I I see that the brunch is not there <laughs> between breakfast and lunch. Oh, it's not. It's not actually. Um. Yeah. Maybe on a weekend we have what we call brunch. Um, which is a combination of the words breakfast and lunch. Um, and this is, I mean, it's whatever you want it to be. <laughs> um, it's, it's, it can be a combo of both. It can be one, it can be the other. Um, and you'd eat this at probably like 10 or 11. Um, as a, yeah, maybe if you've woken up late, <laughs> um, have one, have one sort of meal in one. Yeah. Okay. Have that dinner. And then dinner, yeah, so usually between six to eight. So that's kind of a big a big difference, way earlier than it is here. Um, it's seen for us as the main meal of the day. Um, and again, this depends on what people like to eat, but it will usually be a meat dish, maybe some pasta, curry, stew, um, sausages, you know, any anything that you anything that you like, but it's usually a bigger, a bigger cooked meal, um, because we don't have that during the middle of the day. So was it hard for you to get used to uh, eating uh, dinner at 9, 10 p.m.? It was, yeah. At first it was. Um, I was like, oh, <laughs> what? <laughs> I'm, I'm hungry now. <laughs> I'm hungry. I'm starving. Yeah. Right. No, yeah, I'm getting used to it, I think. All right. <laughs> so, but, but you snack at 6 or at 8 or at 7 because you, you get hungry, don't you? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Okay. Good. So another one, Kevin. Good. Yeah, I think there's one more as well. Um, so Sunday roast again, the first photo at the top. I mean, you might have heard of this before. Um, so it's a typical meal uh, eaten every Sunday at around one or two p.m. So like a lot later. Um, so it's roast meat, roast potatoes, vegetable gravy, which is like a, a sauce made out of the juice of the meat um so the tradition is that it's eaten every sunday um but nowadays most families won't do this every week um and because you know you usually invite all your family over um or you'd go you'd go with your family to the pub because the pub pubs serve this they serve it every sunday um so again it's a bit like the the traditional full english breakfast um hotels and places and pubs will serve it every sunday um but reality in reality not 
every family does this every weekend. Um, and and again, um, something that's maybe a bit more confusing is that the names of meals can actually differ based on where you live in the UK. Um, so in the south of England, um, you call it breakfast, lunch, and dinner. In some places in the north of England, um, you call it breakfast, and then what people in the south would call lunch at midday, you'd actually call that dinner. Um, and then the last meal, you you call that tea, um, or some people call it supper. So my mum, she's from the north of England, so she ca always calls our last meal tea. Um, spelt the same way as the drinking tea. Um, I don't know why, um, but that's just that's just the case. So you might be talking to someone about dinner and you could have a completely different, you might be having a packed lunch, but they might be having um, a Sunday roast. Um, oh. It just depends on how you use the word dinner um, or tea. But if she was talking to someone from uh, the South, she would use the word tea or she would change it to dinner? us to make herself understood um i mean generally you kind of know if i was talking about it in the morning it might not be very clear but generally we're understood so i live in the south of england but i've always called it tea um and all my friends know that i'm on about dinner um so generally generally you're understood um within the uk but if you if you come from somewhere else and you have no idea that tea is not just the drink um <laughs> Yeah. Well, I, I didn't know that. Okay. Go yeah. ahead. Um, another thing that was quite um, different is the, the types of shops. Um, so in the UK, the most common types of shops that we, that we have and that we use um, are called supermarkets. So these are, these are big, uh, big shops that tend to stock fresh meat, dairy um, and groceries as well. Um, all in all in one place. Um, most of them will also have in-store bakeries or a fish counter as well. Um, and in the biggest supermarkets, you can even buy clothing, um, homewares, uh, and you know electronics. So some will sell light bulbs, for example. Um, some even sell phones and laptops. Um, in, in they're in the very biggest ones, but supermarkets just combine everything. Um, and they're the most common common types of shop we have. Um, so we have various different brands of supermarkets. Um, some are known as more expensive and some are known as less expensive. Um, so, you know, there's there's a kind of, if you say to someone, oh, I shop here, they might go, oh, you're, you're fancy. Um, but yeah, so some would just have higher prices and a better reputation maybe. Um, but yeah, um, but then we also do have independent green grocers, butchers and bakeries. Um, we have those as well as supermarkets, but they tend to be a little bit more expensive um, to buy things individually as the produce is often locally sourced or locally made, um, which for us is more expensive than maybe importing something from cheaper from abroad. Um, but I mean, that just depends. So we have, we have both options. Um, to either buy things from individual shops or to go to a supermarket and have everything everything there. Um, nowadays, um, for people who, especially for people who work during the week, um, it's very common for them to order, order their weekly shop um, to their house or order it to the supermarket and collect it um, at a time that's, that's good for them, which we call click and collect. Um, Whereas if you, you know, you could also deliver it to your house. So you order it, you know, you put all your items in online, you select the ones you want, you select a day and a time. Uh, so Tuesday at half six in the evening. Uh, and then at Tuesday at half six, they'll come to your house in that van um, below or one similar covered in some type of food. Um, and they, they drop it off at your house for you um, to avoid you having to go. So maybe for older people who can't get to supermarkets as easily or just for people who um, don't want to go in the weekend rush and want something delivered midweek. Right. So tell us about your experience here with the shop. 
So have you been to the green grocers, to the, uh, I don't know, the bakeries? Do you do the shopping yeah. or does anybody else does it for you? Does anybody else do it for you? Um, we sort we go together. I go together with the girl that I live with. Um, but yeah, more the individual shops. Uh, and then once a month we go to um, a bigger one to sort of stock up on the things that um, we need, really. All right. Okay. And do you like our shops? <laughs> I do like your shops, yeah. <laughs> lots of bakeries. There are lots, lots of out there. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I think there might be another bit of information on this slide. Yeah. So we also have corner shops um, or news agents, um, that I think they were originally called. Um, so these are small shops in 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 your neighborhood, you know, just down the street from where you live, that originally um, stocked items such as newspapers. So the daily newspaper, which is how it got its name, um, news agent. Um, but I mean, they sell everything from stationery to greeting cards, um, cigarettes, snacks, sort of anything that you'd want maybe when, and they're open in the evenings. Um, so when maybe the shops have shut, they'll be open. So if you need to go and grab something that you can't get because the shop shut, they'll have it. Um, that's, so it, that's... Would, it would be similar to our kioskos then. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Years later. So it, it was used to, uh, yeah, it used to be only for newspapers, but now it's just for lots of things. Yeah, lots right. of things. Yeah. Okay. Nightlife. Yeah. Nightlife, yeah. So this is um, different. Um, so I mean, I mean, if if you know anything about the UK, you've probably heard of a pub. Um, we we these uh, they are everywhere. I should have actually researched how many pubs there are in the UK because um, there's hundreds, if not thousands. Um, so pubs actually stands for public house, um, and it's kind of in the name, you know that. It's, it's well it's a it's not a house but it, it kind of feels like a house when you walk in um there'll be sofas there'll be chairs there might be a fireplace um and it's just a really social area where you go to sit drink chat with your friends and um, play card games they'll always have the tv with the latest sports game on um so you can go to sit and drink and watch the sports um and then many will also have an outside garden um, for people to enjoy the sun in the summer um, the more the more fancy ones also have heaters for in the winter so if if there's not enough room inside you can still sit outside with your coat and the heater um, so yeah they're, they're really really social places um, and we have them absolutely everywhere um, so you'll be you'll be served um, a range of alcoholic and non-alcoholic drinks um, you know, to cater for everyone. So families will go during the day, um, and then you know, uh, they're also used for adults at, in the evenings. <laughs> so they're usually open from eleven a.m. until eleven thirty p.m. Um, I think by law they have to shut at eleven thirty. No pub is allowed to be open later. <clears throat> and however, I think actually when there might be. The World Cup on, or we have what we call the Euros. Um, so it's, I mean, it's actually, I think they start today. Um, so it's like the World Cup, but it's just for like European countries um, for football. So I think they're allowed to extend maybe their closing time by half an hour or an hour during this period. But apart from that, they have to by law um, shut at eleven thirty. So that that would be the curfew. Yeah. Yeah, and yeah, here uh, there's a question by Natalia. Uh, what would be the difference between pub and bar in the UK? I mean, so bar is late. So it's just later. Um, you don't you usually can't sit down. It's more, they'll have more loud music. It's more the vibe of a club. Um, but it's like, it's a bit like the bars here um, that you have, you know, it's, you go there for a few drinks, um, but I mean, a pub, you can really sit down, you can spend as many hours there as you want. Um, it's it's a lot more relaxed. Um, I think for pubs, maybe 
you might dress up more, uh, sorry, bar, you might dress up more to go to a bar. Um, it's more of an event. Whereas a pub, you could literally rock up wearing anything, um, take your kids with you. Um, it's Yeah, it's a very social, familial setting, whereas bars are more, um, you know, for the late evenings if you're, if you're going out. Um, but can you, can you go into a pub if you're underage? Yes, because they can serve food. Um, oh, all right. I think you can't, often in a pub, you'll have the bar section and then maybe seating. So I don't think they can go to the bar. Um, there, there are some laws around that. And again, they, they might differ in each pub. If you're, if you're with parents and stuff like that and you're underage, it's all right. If you were underage with a group of underage people, probably not. You probably wouldn't be allowed in. Oh, that's if you, why. If you were going with, yeah, if you were going with adults or, or your parents or anyone. Because anyone. I wanted some of my students to go into a bar because I remember it was the oldest in London or something like that. And we wouldn't be allowed in because they were underage. Uh, but it, it wasn't at night. It was uh, <laughs> the afternoon. It was early in the afternoon. And we were asked for, they were asked for their IDs and they... Okay. They, they wouldn't, they they wouldn't go in, so they they didn't have the chance to 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 see a, a pub. Yeah, but yeah, but there's a there was a huge bar there, so it it might have been because of that. There yeah. was a counter, um, yeah. and they they told us that there would be fines that are uh, very high fines if they find an underage there. Yeah, I mean that's one thing that. England and the UK are very big on is being underage and not being allowed in if you're underage. Um, you'll almost always be asked for your ID um, <clears throat> and even buying alcohol in shops. They have, in most shops, they actually have a question. It's, it's a policy and they call it question 25. Um, so the person at the checkout, if they, they are allowed, if they think you look younger than 25, um, they are allowed to ask to see your ID um, yeah. to check, even though you can technically buy alcohol from 18. Um, but I guess you could be a really young looking 25 year old. I don't know, <laughs> which I think would be a compliment. But um, yeah, we have a we have a question 25 policy in a lot of places. So what I've noticed maybe in Europe, in in France and Spain and Italy, they don't seem to have a problem. With if you're underage or if you're not, you're sort of allowed anywhere. Um, but in England, you do definitely have to be 18, um, and they they will check this always. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, so I mean, you could just go to the pub for a night out. Um, you know, you could start drinking early and you know, stay there. But if you wanted to move on, you could then go straight to the bar, a bar for a few drinks, um, and then you could even move on to a club, um, which I think they open at around 11.30, but no one goes that, that early. You'd be the first one on the dance floor um, alone. Um, so most people get there. I mean, we have last entry in clubs, which is usually around half one. Um, so you usually try and get there for around one, um, 1 a.m. or between 12 and one, because otherwise you won't be, you won't be let in. Um, and then they usually open until four. Um, some are open until five or six, um, but that's something that's very different. We, we you know, start a lot earlier. Um, you might go to the pub at around six, seven, eight p.m., and then you'd get home. If you did the full thing, you'd get home at around four. Okay. Any questions so far? You can type them there, or or you can uh, ask. If not, we, we move on with the following topic. All right. Yeah, so, I mean, the next thing that was different was school and work hours. And then also I'll move on to shop shopping opening hours. Um, so students um, between primary and secondary school um, attend school between around 8.30 to 9 um, a.m. And then until 3.15 p.m. So we finish a lot, a lot earlier. But again, it's the same as when we work. We work, you know, the whole day with no, no break in between. Um, or, you know, no siesta. Um, 
So we'll usually have a 20 minute break around 11 um, and then around a 45 minute break for lunch at half 12, 1245. Um, and that photo is just a typical um, secondary school timetable. Um, so you'll sort of have three subjects in the morning, two between your first break and lunch, um, and then one after lunch before you go home. Um, at university, some classes can take place until 7 p.m. Um, but only at university. Um, everywhere, everywhere I've sit, it stops at 3, 3.15. Um, and then it just gives you a chance to do maybe some after-school activities, some sport between 3 and 4. And here, what, what did you learn about our time timetable in secondary school, in primary school? Yeah, I mean, so you start a lot earlier in the morning, seven, half seven, I think. Um, and then you finish, you can finish a lot later as well. Um, half nine, I think. Is that, I don't know if that's the latest. Um, so that, that is very different. But then also it never gets that hot for us at midday. We can sort of brave the heat throughout midday. <laughs> we, don't, yeah. we don't need that. We don't need that break. Okay. Okay. I guess this was the last topic, wasn't it? Like I think so. Yeah. And, um, I Kami, if you keep on clicking, I I'm not sure if there were other things there or not. Ah, well, yes. Yeah. Um. So again, working hours in the UK. Um. Again, it can depend on the job, but usually it's between nine and five, or nine to five. Um, with a one hour lunch break in the middle of the day. Um, so typically if you work in the UK, you'll be working eight hours a day, um, 40 hours per week, um, eight hours a day, five days a week, which 40 hours per week in total. Um, and then, I mean, on shops, um, during the week, high street shops, um, and, and retail shops are typically open from around nine till six, um. Bigger supermarkets are probably open between six a.m. and ten or eleven p.m. Um, just so that if you do, if you you know everyone's working nine till five, so if all the shops shut at five, that would be pointless because no one no one would be able to go. Um, so they usually open a bit earlier and a bit later um, to allow people to go around around work times. Um, and then on Sundays, um, shops will either have limited uh opening hours um so probably between 10 and 4 um sometimes it's 10 and 2 again it, it just depends on the shop or some smaller shops might just be shut completely on a sunday um, so you do need to know where you live um if you're if you're going to run out of of milk i don't know on the weekend you need to make sure you go on the saturday so that you have some for the monday because um, i've been i've been caught out so many times where i think that a shop's going to be open on a Sunday and it's just not. <laughs> <laughs> well, here they are not open either. And here no. there's a, Ornella is saying they have longer periods at the school, around 50 minutes each. Uh, yeah. So we have 40 minute, 40 minute periods or 80. And she's saying that you've got uh, around 50 each, right? Yeah. So, I mean, in primary and secondary school, it's like an hour um, usually. Um, and then at university, um, I mean, it, it can depend, um, usually around 50 minutes, but you might have some lectures that might be two hours um, and you'll probably have a 10 minute break once it's been one hour. Uh, but yeah, 50 minutes to an hour uh, are, our, are our typical sometimes. Yeah. Okay. So, so far you've been talking about differences mainly. What were, uh, have you found any similarities? that you felt at ease, you felt at home, because it was exactly the same? Um, ooh. <laughs> um, I, don't think anything, I don't think anything's been exactly the same. Um, I think everything's a bit different in, in small ways. Um, you know, no, there's nothing, there's some things that haven't really shocked me. Um, I'm now trying to think of them. <laughs> Um, 
or the perception of time. I, I'm always obsessed with time because I see that the, we are so different. So maybe being punctual, being on time, being late, like if you're, uh, if some, if you're having someone over, for example, if you organize a, if we organize a party or something, you are not supposed to uh, be there on time because the the guest will be still cooking or something. It's yeah. it's rude to show up at the, at that at that time. Uh, so I don't know if you've had any of those experiences, being there early and there was nobody or everybody being late or the students not arriving, all the, the, the perception of time. Um, luckily, I haven't so far. Because, um, I mean, I'd say when I go into the, the school, usually they're, you know, they're on time because it's more of a schedule that you have to follow. And then if I've gone out with friends, I've gone out with other friends. So they I go when they go. <laughs> um, so I'm, I'm never really alone in that situation. So that hasn't happened to me just yet. Um, but um, I think something that I have found similar actually is um, love of animals and pets and dogs in, um, in particular. Um, everyone here has dogs, everyone loves dogs, um, which is, the, I would say is exactly, the same, or cats, it's exactly the same in the UK. Um, they're a very big part, if you have them, they're a very big part of the family um, in a lot of households. Um, so that's that's something I was kind of surprised at. Um, I don't know why, but um, yeah, that's that's I'd say that's a similarity. Yeah. Okay. So um, I don't know if uh, there are some people here that I, I guess most of them are teachers of English here. Ah, by the way, I remember the the uh, we used to be taught that we could say teacher of English or English teacher, and depending on where the stress was, it would be that you are English, like from England, or that the subject was English, like English mm -hmm. teacher and English teacher. Then we were told that we should be saying teacher of English. So what's your opinion on that? Um, I mean, I've always said English teacher um, in the same way that I would say science teacher, maths teacher, mm -hmm. um, art teacher, um, music teacher um, I think probably maybe because it's shorter and even we don't like to say the whole the whole phrase oh you're a teacher of English um, and if everyone will understand what you mean I think unless you put the accent or the stress on it wrongly then someone might mean might look at you a bit funny and go did you mean to you know well, wait are you now saying something that I don't think you're saying um, you're an English teacher rather than what I think you're trying to say is English teacher um, but we, t I mean, that's we always tend to use the shortened version. Um, All right. But definitely, if you if you do put the stress on English, it might make us question. Oh, <laughs> hang on, what, <laughs> what are we trying to say? Um, but yeah, no English teacher, I think. So, it's are you most... an English teacher and an English teacher? <laughs> I am an English teacher and an English teacher. <laughs> <laughs> Both. All right. Perfect. All right. <laughs> okay. So, um, well, thank you, Fabia. I don't know if there are any questions here. Um, I will uh, switch to Spanish just in case because I'm not sure who's here, who's attending. Uh, bueno, le damos las gracias a Fabia que nos dio esta presentación. No sé si tienen algún... Ah, justo tenemos una profe de fonética. <laughs> Single accepted. <laughs> Por eso preguntaba <laughs> lo de teacher of English, English teacher, English teacher. Uh, no sé si tienen alguna pregunta que le quieran hacer, quieren practicar su inglés y hacerla oralmente, quieren escribirla, relacionado a los temas que presentó o no. Ahora tenemos que pensar en el tema de la próxima de la próxima charla, así que eh, vamos a tener en cuenta las cosas que nos pusieron en el, en el Google Form. Y si hay algo que quieren que, que Fabia desarrolle, alguna temática específica, de, de, Avísenos. No sé si tienen alguna pregunta, Nati, Ornella, o si quieren eh, participar y hablar. Cami, ahora sí podemos dejar de compartir. Bueno, eh, eh, estaban los datos ahí de la, de la SUBSE, de la Dirección de Plurilingüismo, que es la que organiza la, estas charlas. Ahí vamos a ver a la galería. Muy poquitos con cámara prendida. Shame on you guys. Turn them on. Talk to her. Make the most of it. Nati, ahí tenemos a Nati. Ok, Ornella. All right. Ok. 
So you, uh, well, you know each other, don't you, Natia and Fabia, because you work at the teacher training college, all right? Okay. She was attending they... a class. Um, she focused on uh, spotting the differences. How she learned her mother tongue, French and Spanish. Yeah, nice. Well, by the way, we're going to organize another talk in French because her level of, of French is really high, C1. So we're going to be organizing one for teachers of uh, French teachers, not teachers of French, French teachers. <laughs> and uh, here we've got uh, teachers from all over Chaco. And there's one from Pujoy, Analia. Hi. She has my same last name, but she's not my sister. <laughs> So, Analia is joining us from Jujuy. I'm really thankful for this opportunity. So, hi, dear Chaco colleagues. <laughs> nice to meet you. Northern Argentina. <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> okay. And I don't know where the others are from. Uh, which cities are you from? ¿De, de, dónde, ¿De dónde es el resto? Bueno, sé que hay alguien de esas peñas. Eh, había de otras de otras localidades bueno es un horario medio complicado algunas están en clase así que no sé Nati would you like to ask a, uh, any question Analia Ornella Ana Marianela Andrea Graciela any questions ah Machagay okay Andrea de Machagay okay all right so no questions guys no okay good Well, eh, tenemos a Camila que nos está acompañando de la OFI de Dirección de Plurilingüismo que nos acompañó con, con las diapositivas. Gracias, Cami. <ríe> y tuvimos un inconveniente con, con el canal de YouTube, así que bueno, después vamos a subir a la, a la plataforma de, de YouTube de la, de la provincia para que quede grabado lo, y lo puedan consultar. Así que bueno, si no hay más preguntas, gracias Fabia. Así que quédense con, conectados, stay tuned, porque seguramente va a haber una próxima ya vamos a ir pensando en la temática. Así que bueno, gracias por conectarse desde todas las provincias del norte <ríe> y nos estamos viendo. Gracias, Fabia. Que tengas gracias a vos, Fabia. Igualmente. Bye, bye. 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 See you. Bye. bye. <ríe>